G'day, I'm Mrs. Dow, and welcome to Mrs. Dow's Art Room. Here's today's lesson. Mini Art Gallery. I'd created a few different artworks here, and I'm going to show you soon how I did it, but let's first take a look at some ways you could display them. Here are some ways that I've displayed my artworks in a gallery setting. I used a windowsill inside my rabbit's hutch. Wombat really liked these artworks. <laughs> I also used the inside of a drawer and tested out up against a wall. I used minifigures, my pets, and they really seemed to enjoy the show. <laughs> you can see how small these artworks are, about matchbox size. It's up to you how tiny you create your artworks but we need to see a little bit of detail. So the more details you add to these tiny artworks, the more interesting they look. You might like to create a series for a pet or some toys, or you might just like to recreate a few artworks. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is decide who your tiny art gallery is going to be for. Are you going to use some Lego toys, a teddy, a pet? Uh, or are you going to make some tiny people? I've decided to use some Lego and my bunny. So I'm gonna set up a tiny art gallery that uh, will be about the right size for them. So this was just my planning. I've drawn a few picture frame ideas and that sort of thing. Once you've decided who your artworks are going to be for, we can start to get some paper ready to create our artworks on. So I've ripped out a piece of paper from my sketchbook and what I'm going to do is fold it a few times so that my artworks are all similar sizes. So I think I'll fold it in half this way. I've got a double sheet but I'm probably only going to use half of it and then I'll fold a few smaller. You can cut out your bits of paper to do your artworks on however you like. I might just speed up this process but you can design yours how you want to. Alright, now I have my uh, canvases or my paper ready to create my artwork on. I've got to decide what kind of artwork I want to create. Well, I've got a visitor. Excuse you, Marigold. Sorry about that. She likes to get involved with the art making process too. Okay, so over here, because I've got six uh, pieces of paper that are the same size, I might do a series of artworks over here that all kind of match and go together. Then I might do some portraits in these oval ones, maybe a landscape in my last long one, and I'll decide what I'm going to do with these after. So I'm going to start with these ones. Now you can just design your artwork however you want. You can use anything to create it. You could collage by sticking different bits of paper on. You could paint. You could use pencils or textures. It's really up to you. You may have seen this stuff called washi tape before. This is really handy for this project if you want to tape off the edges so that you've got a border left where your picture doesn't touch and then you can create a frame on it afterwards. So I'll show you how I set this up. I'm just going to tape these down, touching a little bit of each of my pictures. So I'm just going to speed this part up. If you want to have a go at it, you can pause it at the end and then tape your pictures down as well so that you've got a little border covered up. Okay, now I'm going to paint a picture that covers all of these canvases. And um, when I'm finished, I'm going to separate them all. So it'll be one image when they're all together, but I'll separate them for display just to make it look a little more abstract. And hopefully the effect will be pretty cool. Once I'm finished, if you like the idea, you might like to have a go as well. Again, this can be done with pencils, textures, paint or collage or whatever you have at home. I might speed up this process and then you can pause it if you need to. You don't actually have to tape the edges down. This is just another way to do it 
to leave that border. But here I'm creating an abstract artwork and then by separating all the pictures as well, it'll be abstracted a bit further. So it'll look like there's some pieces missing. I really just made this up as I went, but you could use artworks that you love as inspiration or pictures around you. You could use your family or other things that you like. Okay, so I had a few visits from my cat again while I was painting that one, but it's finished. And once it's dry, what we can do is peel up all of the tape and you can even reuse this sometimes, it's still sticky. Um, to reveal a nice clean border around your whole artwork. You really can create artwork however you like. You don't have to copy what I've done. But I just thought I'd give you a couple of ideas on how I went about it. I hope you have fun with this part. This just shows you one way that you can create something a little bit different and interesting. Okay. So when I display them, they'll go like that and it kind of makes a little bit of a picture but it's still a little bit confusing so hopefully that messes with their minds a little bit all right that's one set of artwork done i'll move that off to the side these ones i'm going to work with pencil so that you can see something a little bit different i'm actually going to make some lego portraits so this is one of my art gallery visitors and this is another one so I'm going to do a couple of portraits that kind of match these ones. Again, I'll probably just speed this up so that you can see the final result and feel free to pause at any time if you want to have a look at what I'm doing. You might also like to go a bit further and add backgrounds or other bits and pieces to portraits that you like to see. to do is just add a picture frame to these to finish them off and then to do that I'm going to use a brown pencil and just add a dark oval around If you want to make your picture frames a bit more fancy you can add extra detail to them as well so for instance this one might do a thicker border with a dark pencil and I'll add some wavy lines the whole thing in but you'll still see those details this works much better if you don't actually draw in the area where your picture frame is going to go <laughs> so this fancy big one I'm going to do next but I'm going to work on the picture frame first so I'm going to draw a box inside this box and because it's a square one you draw lines out to the corners to make the frame look like it's been joined properly then we can add some fancy details Oops. and this could just be squiggles or shapes have a look around your house and see if you've got any picture frames with fancy details in them. Um, and then all you have to do is colour in with a different colour and that way your details stand out. I'm 
this picture frame. This artwork is going to be inspired by maybe Jackson Pollock. I'll speed it up and that way you can have a look at what it looks like. Last thing to do is to put them on display and take a video or a photo of your audience checking them out or your animals having a look. I hope you have fun with this activity. You really can have free reign and design what you like as long as it's school appropriate. Thank you so much, my amazing art students. I can't wait to see what you've done.